So hi everyone, I'm Dr. Swarat Dixit and I am a faculty for surgery at Anna Academy and I'm a consultant laparoscopic and robotic surgeon from New Delhi. So today I'm going to discuss with you a very interesting case, a case of limbedema. Actually, I have a patient today with me who is having a 35 year old history of lymphatic obstruction and this is a secondary type probably because of the filaria. The patient has a history of being, in, uh, being bitten by an insect approximately 30-35 years ago. So today, before discussing that case and showing you the clinical steps, I will go for the evaluation of limb edema. Now whenever you talk about lymphatic obstruction, whenever you talk about lymphatic obstruction and lymphatic obstruction resulting in lymph edema, we have to understand that it can be of two types. It can be a primary, it can be a primary or it can be a secondary. Now what is the difference between primary and a secondary? Let us discuss that. Primary lymph edema is a lymph edema when the cause is not known. When we don't know the cause, it is based upon the age of the patient. If the age is less than 2 years, if it is less than equal to 2 years, this is a congenital variety. This is a congenital variety. If the age is more than 2, up to 35 years, that is known as lymph edema precox. Lymph edema precox. And then, if the age of the patient is more than 35 years, then that is known as lymph edema tarda. Lymph edema tarda. Next, when we talk about the secondary lymph edema, this is a lymphatic obstruction associated with a cause. Now, in this case, the patient that we have, we have a 50 year old patient who is having a history of insect bite 35 years ago. So, this is a lymphatic obstruction because of the insect bite. So this is the secondary. So secondary they are more frequent, they are more frequent and if you see they are commonly seen in the developing countries. So Bucheria Bancrofti, Brugaya Melai, post trauma. In developed countries we have it post, you can say post surgery and what surgeries? Surgeries like MRI where you actually damage the lymphatics. Now when we are talking about the patient scenario, now I will take you to the patient and we will discuss the patient. So hi residents, now I will take you to the examination part of this. So I welcome you all to the laparocare world where we will be discussing with you the clinical approach to the patient of lymphedema. So I have with me a 50 year old patient whose name is Basil and hi Basil, how are you? Uh, are you able to see Okay, so can you focus on this limb? Can you focus on this limb? So, this is the patient of chronic limb edema. Now, let's see the other pair. First of all, you can see this is, a, this is a normal limb. This is absolutely normal. The limb is absolutely normal. But if you see this limb, you can see a huge girth. So, this is how you make a decision that it is a case of limb edema. Now, how to decide whether it is a venous limb edema or whether it is a lymphatic obstruction. Always remember the venous obstruction will start above the level of medial malignance. But here if you see the foot is also involved. The foot is not spared in the lymphatic obstruction. So this is the patient, patient of lymphatic obstruction. Let us talk to the patient and decide about the history. So you can tell me when the patient is the old age. So the patient gives a history of 35 years ago. Now, क्या हुआ था? कहते सर मैंने किसी कीड़े ने काटा था या चोट लगी कीड़े ने? भाई कहते हैं स्कूल में नाम की बेड़ी सबके पैदा थे। बाल पाई जब तक आपकी बारिश थी, धूप थी, उस टाइम। Okay, so patient has a history that patient has been bit, patient has been bit by an insect, and ये फिर उसके बाद धीरे-धीरे धीरे-धीरे फिर खोलता था। So now you see that this is progressive in gut, progressive in gut. Now, if you see I will tell you what are the classical important features of lymphatic obstruction. The first thing that we all have to understand that this limb, this is what is known as the tree trunk limb. This is a tree trunk limb. Can you see? This is a tree trunk limb. So the girth of this is like a girth of a tree trunk. Can you see? This is huge. This is huge. Next is, if you see there are a lot of fibrotic skin changes. Can you see? This is fibrotic skin changes. There are fibrotic skin changes. 
this is what is this pigmentation fibrotic skin changes this is referred as lichenification lichenification if you see there are multiple ulcers which is which is showing you a scab also so what is this this is classically referred as a decubitus ulcer because of the friction now if you see the the foot the foot what is this this is a buffalo's hump can you see this is a classical buffalo's hump these are square toes these are square toes but i will show you a very important thing which is known as loss of manual pitting now normally if you see his normal limb and if there is edema if there is edema i will press and i can evaluate the pitting but here the manual pitting is lost can you see can you focus here there is nothing known as manual pitting because of excessive subcutaneous edema then i will show you one more thing i will try to pinch the skin can you focus on this i will try to pinch the skin this is possible this is a normal reaction but i will not be able to pinch the skin what is this this is known as this is known as a stemmer sign so we have a stemmer we have seen a tree trunk here we have seen the buffalo sun one more thing i will show you just focus on his toes these are the normal toes these are the normal toes can you see the square toes this is what is known as squaring of the toes squaring of the toes these are square toes square toes buffalo hum tree trunk limb stemmer sign inability to pinch or loss of malleolar pitting decubitus ulcer fibrotic skin changes lichenification at this these are the salient features that we have now how will we how will we evaluate this patient this is of paramount importance do you know that in lymphatic edema the most important thing is the history now if the patient doesn't tell you about the history of insect bite you will not be able to make out and then merely on the basis of the age will be deciding whether it is congenital whether it is tarda or whether it is lymphatic precox now how should we proceed from 35 years let me ask him aapne kya kya ilaaj karwaya kya kisi ne aapko kya sala di ki ye theek hoga ki nahi theek hoga theek hoga so people have over the time he has visited lot of hospitals which have denied actually that he will be correct now at highland care highland uh, highland medic highland care multi speciality hospital we have decided to go for a limb reduction surgery of this patient we'll be going for a strategic limb reduction surgery and probably we'll be going for a contolion or homens where we go for the step wise compartment reduction so my my planning will be a limb reduction surgery but right now we will go and give him a course of uh, antibiotics and also dec dithyl carbazine since this is the case of filariasis will be advising him 100 bd for maybe 4 to 6 weeks also i will be advising him to go for limb elevation use a braided compression stocking why so that the compression bandaging will not allow this to further worsen the scenario however in this case it is not going to work because already it has gone to an extent where practically the compression bandaging will not be relieving him there is one more strategy of bypass that is lymphatic bypass graft in the form of we have nelubovic surgeries where we do a lymph node to venous bypass we have ideal patch we have momental patch but practically speaking they are not going to be uh, you can say productive because in theory it can be explained that we do, do a lymphatic to venous bypass but practically the success rate are quite questionable so this was a brief introduction about the chronic lymphedema i hope you enjoyed for admissions to lapro care world you can log on to www.drsaradikshit.com and if you really enjoyed the video do like the channel and subscribe it